Okay, um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about my trips that I did over the last uh, two years. Uh, I expected to do a third one this year, but it didn't work out. Uh, so why does India keep throwing me back year after year? <laughs> so India is a land that has uh, an excess of about 290 snake species. Uh, not by, by no means the, one of the higher countries in the world, but it's up there. Uh, but it's also the land where uh, human snake conflicts are very high. Uh, there was a, a documentary that came out one calling India the land of a million snake bites. Uh, that number isn't far from the truth. India does have about 950,000 snake bite incidents a year, of which about 50,000 turn out to be fatal. So that's a huge number. But then again, you got to remember that India has a billion plus population, and uh, a lot of them are rural areas where people don't wear proper footwear, travel in, uh, travel to the toilet at night without uh, a light and things like that. So that increases uh, the chances. Uh, a lot of these snake bites come from basically the big four, four snake species, uh, of which I've only personally encountered uh, two in China. So, which, uh, sorry, in India. So we'll see some. Okay. So the Western Ghats are a continuous uh, mountain range that spans across the west of India. Uh, basically from the north all the way down to Kerala in the south. But this region here is usually referred to as the Southern Ghats and not really the Western Ghats. But it is a continuous mountain range. Um, so basically I visited in um, 2013 in February. February is uh, a dry season, so I expected to I uh, uh, encountered different kinds of reptiles, which I did, and then uh, that was more a recce trip to go back to the Western Ghats in the monsoon. The monsoon is when the Ghats really light up, as far as uh, biodiversity. So uh, that little red line, which you can't see so well, is basically where I traveled in 2013, and this in 2014. Uh, 2013 was Goa and Pune. So uh, I did go to Goa, but I did not visit the beach or I uh, have any fun. Uh, I did go to the beach one evening trying to spot some sea snakes on low tide, but I didn't find any. But I have not experienced the fun side of Goa. Uh, instead, I got, uh, I met up with this uh, local snake rescuer uh, who put me up at his place, and then we go out for calls, uh, go out and look for stuff during the day. Okay. So I just want to show you guys this, but uh, this is Google Earth. And that green belt that you see on the west of India, that's the Western Ghats. But what's quite curious and what some people theorize, which I kind of employ to, is that if you go well, southeast here, a southwest, and come down to Africa and look at Madagascar, on the eastern shore of Madagascar, you also have that belt of forest. And you see it's very linear just like the Western Ghats is on India. So, long time ago, before the continent split, yes, Madagascar was probably part of the Western Ghats range in India. So that's very interesting. Uh, both today are incredible biodiversity hotspots, uh, both up there in the top eight in the world. Okay, a little bit about the Western Ghats. Uh, it covers about 160,000 square kilometers. Uh, it acts as a catchment area for about 40% of India's drainage. So about 40% of India's, India drains into the guts of the west and out from there. The average elevation is about 1,200 meters and uh, one of the world's top biodiversity hotspots. Um, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but really to put that into context, the guts is a long mountain range. Within that mountain range, there are 39 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, from forest reserves to nature reserves to uh, various different places. Uh, the monsoon season is between June and September. Uh, it is the time to visit the Western Ghats if you're looking for uh, reptiles and especially amphibians. Uh, some of them come out for as little as two weeks a year, early June. So they come out, they do their business, they breed, and then they are not seen again for the rest of the year. Um, the average rainfall is about three to 4,000 uh, millimeters. Singapore has an average of about 2,300, and there are localized areas in the Western Ghats where rainfall has hit 9,000 millimeters a year. So you can imagine the humidity, and it's, it almost never stops raining in some places. Uh, forests are largely tropical and subtropical. Okay, so this picture was taken at dusk, up one of my hikes, uh, uh, up one of the mountains. 
so you can see the range of the guards there. Some of these pictures I've taken some from some friends who took pictures. So basically, uh, the hilltops look like this. Okay, this is uh, further up north and the outskirts of uh, Pune, where uh, this, this habitat is actually very interesting to turn up a uh, lizard in. Okay, so the first place uh, that start there is Goa. And um, I visited that in 2013, so I saw things like this. Uh, street side vendors, which I thought were incredible to photograph because of the colors of the fruits. Uh, we took a boat around some mangroves. Uh, tried to, some of my friends were birders, so we tried to look, look for some birds. And uh, just uh, the lush greenery of the paddy fields, I thought, was the greenest thing I've ever seen. Uh, this photo does not do justice to how green that one paddy field was. But I stayed with this uh, snake researcher, uh, sorry, snake rescuer, and uh, what was interesting was the doorway to his house was just riddled with things like this, which are all snake hooks, but he had them hanging on the wall, on the ground, uh, and all these little nooks and crannies. Uh, this is that snake researcher that one rescued, once rescued this huge, huge king. Um, this, uh, this is a king cobra. So, okay, the, it definitely looks the picture makes the snake look bigger than it actually is just because the snake's head is in the foreground but if you look at his hands yeah. and see how he's holding it yeah, that is some, some girth on that, that snake so I mean, um, India with the, that many snakes and snake encounters have lots of uh, snake rescuers that work in a small village and they basically get calls every day uh, for the littlest to the biggest snakes in the house these guys go, uh, they collect the snakes uh, and they go set them free in the wild. But they've been doing this for years and years and uh, it's not wrong to say they get careless in their practices. So they kind of do things like this. But this guy has handled snakes for decades and really knows them well. Uh, not something that any uh, average or junior herpetologist would try with a, with a king. But then again, kings, if you start to know them, are not uh, mindless, aggressive snakes. They're actually quite calm, not to the extent that I'll do that. Okay, so we went out, and then uh, we'll start talking about things that we found. Uh, this is an Indian rock python. Um, this was quite a large individual, and uh, it's really beautiful to see how they have rosy cheeks, these guys. Um, I switched to a wide-angle lens to take this picture, which was my biggest mistake uh, that I ma made, that I regret till today, because just as I switched to take this picture, uh, this, guy, this guy ran behind me. And it's just one thing I love more than snakes, it's my canids. So I really like my dogs. So I miss this guy, this shot belongs to a friend of mine. Um, the trinket snake is another very common snake that you find in India. Uh, this guy can be found, uh, he's not so much a forest snake, but found more in urban areas. Uh, one that would uh, sneak into your house trying to pick off rats that uh, come in there. Um, unlike this picture, this is one of the most docile snakes I've ever met. Uh, they belong to the genus Coelognathus, and the other members of Coelognathus that we know of in Singapore and Malaysia can be quite feisty, but they all are known to put up such displays. Uh, in the mountains, we found the montane uh, subspecies <coughs> of the trinket. So this guy was just simply gorgeous with its pattern and coloration. Uh, the trinket snakes we thought were really good to use for outreach. Uh, when we rescue a snake from a village, what we tried to do was uh, dispel the fear of snakes among the villagers. So children who have uh, usually do not have an innate fear of snakes will really need to hold one, handle one, and have to take a closer look at it, while the adults wouldn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> okay. So this is a really interesting snake. Uh, it's a sand boa. Uh, that's a close-up of the head. So yeah, it's got really, really tight scalation on top of the head, not following the usual uh, pattern of snake head scales. This one's uh, discovered uh, by and named for the uh, prominent Indian herpetologist Romulus Whitaker. Okay. So this one is the, uh, the common wolf snake. You see this pretty much everywhere in South Asia and even down Southeast Asia. Um, I call them common, but in India, um, whatever, what, whatever we call common, they call Indian. <laughs> so this is the Indian wolf snake to them. So it's the Indian trinket, the Indian rat snake, which is the common rat snake. So they put Indian in front of everything. 
but they're, they're a snake country, so you can't really fault them. Okay, this is another common wolf. Uh, this guy is very, very beautiful. It's the tribal call wolf snake. Um, a snake that in India sometimes gets mistaken for the common crate. Uh, the crate is one of the big four. Uh, it's a dark snake with these uh, bands running across it. So this wolf snake, as you can see by the head, uh, yeah, it's a Lycodon species. Okay, this one's a uh, Russell's Kukri snake, uh, called Kukri, because they have these uh, dentition in the back of their mouth that shape like the Kukri that your Gurkha soldiers carry. Um, you see that they do not have much of a neck. So these guys can, um, they're, they're good egg, egg eaters and have no need to use those uh, cookie-like teeth to crack the egg and take in the insides and spit out the shell. Okay, so this is another very common snake in South and Southeast Asia, the checkered keelback. Um, I've seen checkered keelbacks in many countries, but I especially like this one because as this guy was swimming in a stream, uh, this frog was basically hiding itself, saying, don't see me. <laughs> so, it was, it, it, you had to see it, because uh, this guy would just be froze as the snake slid right past him. Okay. So this is one of the cat snakes, uh, given the name cat snakes because of their elliptical pupils, but many snakes have elliptical pupils. Uh, this is another cat snake resting on a post. So this one is, uh, well, the Indian bronze back, the common bronze back. Uh, we have six bronze back species in Singapore, um, lacking only one that's in Malaysia, that's seven. So this one is uh, the Dolephus Christus, the common bronze back. Okay, so this is the first of the big four snakes that I found in India. This one is the saw scale viper. Uh, saw scale vipers are small. Uh, they're about half a meter, usually, and they sit like this, in this coil. Uh, but soft scale wipers are also known to be one of the fastest strikers in the world, as in the strike. So, this is a snake that uh, could be sitting on the edge of farmland, and someone, bare, someone starts to walk past it barefooted. And uh, a tiny snake will defend itself and usually just let out a bite. And this guy has quite a nasty venom. So, this guy contributes to uh, in fact, among the big four, this guy contributes to one of the higher number of fatalities in India. Um, <coughs> Soft scale vipers can be found in North India as well, in Rajasthan and into the Middle East. But they don't look like this there. Over there, they look, in, in the North, they look bigger. Uh, sometimes even <coughs> three quarters or twice, sorry, um, maybe a quarter or twice the size of the ones in the West and South. So that's very interesting because um, Anti-venoms that are developed in the south do not necessarily work for places like Rajasthan where people get bit by a soft scale viper. So this is one snake that uh, taxonomists definitely are looking into revising, possibly finding the northern or southern one to be something different, or a subspecies at least. Okay, here's another picture of that uh, soft scale viper. So the soft scale viper is not a pit viper. He does not have that heat sensing pits in the front of the mouth that like on the front of the face like the pit vipers usually do. Okay, this is uh, Pune City. Just thought I'd show some uh, city shots. Uh, cities are, I mean, colorful, very colorful. I uh, especially like this picture because this dude's tying his turban and this guy is just really dead on the other his face. Um, so I made my way through these markets to look for bookstores. Um, as much as I like my herbs, I love my herb books. So I went to look for these little bookstores and try and find uh, reptile and amphibian books of India. Okay, uh, I did a little tour of the outskirts of the city and found some of these nomadic uh, goatsmen and found this sign. Yeah. That was quite interesting. <clears throat> so apparently there's a place there called Singapore. Um, this was also the end of my first trip in 2013 that took place in the uh, summer. So, uh, the rest that you're going to see is in the monsoon. Okay, so that's Pune, when I went back in 2014. And uh, we found this guy in my friend's backyard. Uh, this is a juvenile green heel back. Uh, they lose this black and yellow as they get bigger, but the juveniles have a striking coloration. Very beautiful snake. Uh, that night we went out um, 
onto the side of a, a guard road, a mountain road. It was extremely windy and really cold wind. Uh, we did find this uh, common bamboo viper, but I don't think they call this the Indian bamboo viper. Because <laughs> there, there are lots of bamboo vipers. But uh, yeah, this one's a common bamboo viper. Um, this guy was uh, in the wind in his usual strike position hunting, waiting for prey to pass him. Um, okay, so this was quite interesting, and uh, I cannot ID the shrew, uh, although I know it's a shrew. Uh, I could probably try ID the crab. But uh, on the embankment of, by the side of the road, we found this shrew frantically going at a crab. And uh, what it was doing was basically pulling out its limbs and trying to drag the crab into its burrow. Uh, I took a video of this, it's not very long, but um, this video is not uh, fast forwarded at all. So what you see is the actual speed that this shrew was moving. So nice of Wow. So they are really nice. Chicken panic. You can see how windy it was that night. It's a shrew, right? Yes, it's a shrew. It's a shrew. Yeah, finally, pretty close to me. Yeah. Well done, man. We'll ask for the ID for Sintesh Brahman. No, it will take it. Take it will take it inside because I think I was given up now. Eventually, he dismembers the limbs and pulls in the crab either. Okay, so after that, we started our big trip down the ghats uh, to this place called Amboli. Uh, it is a wonderful place. Um, the terrain was uh, mostly like this, short grass, uh, short shrubland. It's extremely wet, so um, and much more so in the monsoon. So these are some habitat charts. Uh, these bushes were really quite interesting. But yeah, this is what we went looking for. And uh, the, this guy was my first Sicilian I had ever seen in my life. So I was super stoked. Uh, Sicilians are amphibians, uh, cousins of uh, frogs, toads, and salamanders um, that live a fossorial lifestyle. They live underground and burrow, so they're not uh, usually encountered. But um, in India, especially in the monsoon, um, the ground gets so saturated by rainwater that they get, can't get flushed out. So you can sometimes find them crossing the trail or very easy, e easily found clipping <coughs> uh, dead wood or a log. Uh, this guy wasn't very big, maybe about 20 centimeters. Yeah. So he's doing something pretty interesting here. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's breathing. drinking water. No, really. I'm sorry for all the shaky video, I'm not a videographer. Has this guy got gills? Sorry? This fella, has he got gills? No, he does not have gills. No. Yeah, they have um, nostrils. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have this little projection here called the tentacle. Okay. So, yeah, uh, the habitat's all green, wet, and mossy, and the geckos there are quite stunning as well. This one's a Prasad's, Prasad's gecko, it has these yellow spots and a bended tail. Uh, this one's a uh, Gekoala, it's got a, a white lip and that's how it gets its name. Um, these are quite uh, similar to some species that we get here in Southeast Asia. Uh, geckos belonging to the genus Cetodactylus, but the tail is quite different in these guys that have this uh, stubby tail. Okay. So, and then we found this guy. Uh, this guy is a pipe belly shield tail, called pipe belly because well, you really have to see its belly. Um, but well, we tried to take a couple of photos of him, but this guy just it wouldn't work out because he has these 
highly reflective and iridescent scales. So if you try to take a photo with a flash, you get this kind of rainbow reflection. Uh, to show how reflective he really is, I took this video. So this is a snake that lives underground, uh, feeds on what we'll see what he feeds on. Yeah, that's how that's why it gets like pie. This is one of the well, according to my friends, there's some of the rare, one of the rarest snakes. But I don't know, we kept finding the rare snakes and not the common ones that night. <laughs> okay, so that evening, uh, we come across this in the middle of the road. And um, at, f at first, we were both just, we went, a few of us were just, we went crazy. Because uh, we knew that was a pipe belly shield tail. But at that moment, a uh, couple of the guys thought that this was a Sicilian. And then I said, no, that's an earthworm. And then my friends there, I told, my, I told the guys there, how can you confuse a Sicilian with an earthworm? Because I've seen Sicilians and they look very different from earthworms. Till they showed me pictures of some Indian Sicilians. They basically took a bunch of pictures and showed me and asked me, Sicilian or earthworm? Sicilian or earthworm? <laughs> I believe me, I got some wrong. <laughs> so they have some Sicilians that look very much like earthworms, which why they went crazy on this one. Um, this video is not going to be very clear because of the excitement and my movement. But you can see how the uh, snake swallows. Excuse the language. <laughs> I said fogged up. <laughs> so I, I shoot with a macro lens and so if I move a little bit my video goes out of focus. So yeah, we we stayed there for a bit watching these guys and they wrestled uh, the other one was still very much alive, and eventually, yes, the snake uh, swallowed the whole thing and moved off uh, mm -hmm. the road into the bush. Okay, so we found um, well, not much here, but you can see one froglet here, and uh, one more. <coughs> yeah. So basically, uh, we flipped these rocks. You don't really see much when you look closely. They're all these. Uh, these are actually toadlets. Yeah, they grow up into a toad. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, stayed a couple of days in Amboli, and that first, uh, I mean, when we moved in, this guy was at our doorstep. Uh, I had never seen a frog of this genus before. Uh, it's a Ramonella. They have this uh, really granular, warty skin, and this really, really cool looks on their faces, I think. There's another one. Um, this guy uh, in India, they call the Michael Jackson frog <laughs> because um, he, would, he keeps moving backwards. He never walks forwards. He keeps moving, moving backwards when uh, you approach it. So you can approach it from different angles. He keep just he'll keep backing away from you. It's quite, it's quite cute. Okay. So uh, this is one of the trails in Amboli. Um, extremely wet. Um, so uh, it messes with your your camera gear and your equipment as well. A lot of things stop working in high moisture like this. Okay. So trees look like that and eerie. Um, we walked down trails like this and then found this, which was an old, uh, old mansion of some uh, Haraja or some sort, I think. Uh, really interesting. Uh, we didn't find much inside other than, well, I found some bats. Uh, I don't have the pictures here because they didn't turn out well. And some toads. But not much else in there. But um, the fog comes and goes in this place. So we set out at about 8.30 to 9 in the morning to go herping. Uh, we'd step out of the room and then it'll just start pouring rain. So we'd go into the closest tea shop and say we'll have some tea. We sit down for tea and then the rain stops. Uh, we get out and we start walking down the road and this thick fog comes in. <laughs> and we can hardly see where we're going. 
And before you know it, it rains again. So we go into another tea shop. So the tea shop owners there were really happy because we kept making these pit stops, just trying to get from places to place to place. Uh, that night we found this um, Indian slash common rat snake. Uh, also a snake that's uh, very common in India. Um, the choice food for the king cobra actually. And um, also found in other parts of East Asia. So uh, this guy looks very similar to what we have here in Singapore. <coughs> but this guy is the uh, long nose whip snake. Uh, we have the oriental whip snake and the Malayan whip snake here in Singapore. Uh, you can see by the long rostrum, long nose. <coughs> uh, this guy's long nose is actually not that pronounced. I've seen it sharper in some other individuals. I didn't find one such mm. individual. Okay, so here is another really rare snake we're not going to see on our trip we saw. Uh, we're walking by a stream, uh, looking at it, and then we found this uh, olive forest snake. Um, I mean, to be honest, not a really impressive looking snake. But if you know snakes, you know that this guy is not something that you see very often in the forest. <coughs> okay. So uh, in India, wherever we stayed, we had one resident, Malabar Pit Viper, <coughs> that would be very close to our residence. Uh, this, this guy was on the post right outside our room. And he was there the whole five days we were there. Oh, I think it's a she. A she was there the whole five days we were there. So you almost, it's not like home in the Western Guards if you don't have a resident viper <laughs> outside your door. Um, you can see this guy is sort of reddish, brown. Um, this one's green with brown, brown speckling. This guy is also a Malabar pit viper. That's another uh, shot of him from a different angle. Um, these guys come in about 14, at least 14 different variations. All the same species, but extremely different. Um, a lot of them have this patterning and are usually earth colory, so uh, green or brown. Uh, but there's, I think there's a pink one, there's a, there's a slight bluish one. Yeah, all the same species, really cool. Yeah. So um, if, if snakes can look fierce, uh, frogs are definitely handsome. <laughs> so. I think frogs are really, really cool, and they have these really cute faces. Uh, this is the Indian bullfrog. This one is really the Indian bullfrog. It's not a common bullfrog. You don't find it in other places. Uh, some other things that we saw, uh, cicada that had just a lot of its small thing there. Uh, this really pretty tarantula across the road. It looked like he was wearing white socks. Uh, I took like one photo of him and then I moved on, but after I saw that when I went back, I wished I spent a bit more time with this one. <coughs> Caterpillar. Um, but you can see that all the animals are wet. Because <laughs> it's, it's really, really, it's really wet out there. Okay. So this one is a uh, froglet of the uh, Malabar glid uh, gliding frog. That's what the adult looks like. It's one of those frogs that has this webbing between its uh, front and back legs yeah, and can glide in the, the air when they jump off a tree. Uh, don't think they jump off to predate on something. I think it's more a defense mechanism, at least for these frogs. I wouldn't say the same for other animals <coughs> of life. Okay, so do you guys see this? <laughs> so Kerry posted something like that. Can anybody go look up what that is? and try to figure out where the rest of the snake is. Okay, so yeah, this is a really interesting family of snakes, really interesting group of snakes. Um, as you can see, it does not have a distinct neck. Uh, they're not supposed to have very good eyesight. These guys are also snakes that live underground. They don't rely on their eyes very much. Uh, its tail looks like this. So it, it looks like somebody just took a snake and sliced part of it off. Uh, this guy is a shield tail called so because of this. Uh, on the underside, they have these yellow bands, and um, they really look like they're incomplete. Uh, shield tails are really interesting snakes. We found um, that pie belly shield, shield tail earlier. Uh, this one's the large tail shield tail, and uh, this one's Fipson's uh, shield tail. Uh, the pie belly does not have an actual shield tail, while the rest uh, do. 
Uh, they're really interesting snakes. Like, it's, uh, like I say, the, the head and the tail quite look similar. Maybe that's a, a defense mechanism. If a predator were to come to it, rather take the tail than take the head. Uh, it has effectively a very short tail. Uh, tail starts about here. And that, that's the tail. Okay. So I traveled south, uh, further south, to uh, Agumbe on my uh, last leg of the trip. And um, it was, uh, it's quite a journey getting to Agumbe. You go through this, you climb the mountain, going through this series of about 39 consecutive hairpin bends. So it's a uh, very, it's a hair-raising road trip. Uh, <coughs> the best. Okay. So I arrived at the uh, research station. Uh, there's some research stations that uh, I really want to visit in my life because of the amazing herpetological research that's come out of that research station. Uh, I did have the honor to visit La Selva in Costa Rica. And then the second biggest one I think I have visited is Agumbe in Agumbe. Well, yeah, the uh, research station in Agumbe. Okay, so it's quite a simple looking facility. But that word, yeah, just beautiful words, ARRS, the Agumbe Rainforest Research Station. Um, this is as you enter the place. Uh, this one's the, uh, the leech runway. This is where you de leech yourself before you, <laughs> you go anywhere. Oh, believe me, there were lots of leeches. Uh, posters on the wall are all past uh, herpetological research that had taken place. Uh, these were our dorms. Uh, yeah, this was me over here. Uh, buddy was over here. Things run on a uh, generator and on batteries. Uh, very simple facility, but really quaint. And, uh, okay. So this is the dinner table. Um, also, the table where uh, Matt Good once put a, the first radio uh, tracker into a King Cobra at this facility, uh, along with uh, Whitaker. And we had our resident Malabatic Viper, of course. Uh, he was right up here, actually. Okay, so these are some of the posters that I uh, photographed. Maybe I'll just let you all at least read the headings. So that's information about the Malabar pit viper, this is the hump nose pit viper, uh, whip snake, uh, this one's the ornate flying snake, uh, one of the shield tails, this is that really rare olive forest snake, it's a kukri. And then uh, we went out at night in Agumbe. So walking down the forest trails, this is what it sounds like. It's almost deafening by the choruses of frogs, uh, such as this one. So there's one that sounds like a typewriter. Yeah, that's this guy, the blue-eyed bush frog. Um, these guys are not very easy to spot. They're not, they're not big. They're about so big. And um, you, keep, you, you, can, you can hear one and then you can go look in the tree and keep looking and looking and looking and you can not spot it sometimes. But these guys, the blue-eyed bush frogs, uh, the really pretty ones really, uh, they were quite easy to spot. These guys, as you can see, were quite down low. Yeah. This is another individual. Top blue-eyed bush frog, of course, because of this brilliant blue they have. So the easier, easier to spot when they start calling and they inflate, yeah, your headlamp actually catches this. Then you get into that, uh, you, you, you think you got the skill of spotting bush frogs. And then it's fun because you call, keep walking down the, the trails, listening for these calls and try to spot these little frogs. Yeah, sometimes they're way up in there. Okay, so um, it's the monsoon and that's when um, Frogs with all that with all that rain, frogs come up to mate, and we got to uh, experience no, uh, well watch these uh, blue-eyed bush frogs mating. So this is uh, two frogs in a plexus, uh, the females on the bottom, the males on top. But what happened was uh, the female basically took this male for a ride. Uh, no, she 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 crawled down this 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 vine, went up here, uh, moved back here. It's as though she was looking for something. And 
Raccoon forests usually lay their bubble nest on drip tips of leaves, so I thought she was looking for a suitable drip tip. Okay, the journey continued. And they moved into this moss. And I don't think anything I have read talked about these guys uh, laying the eggs in moss. So the guy that I, with, I was with works at the center and says, I've been here 20 years. I don't know where these guys lay eggs. So we saw that they crawled into the moss and then uh, stopped their privacy. We watched them for a little while longer and then soon started to see these appear. So I, I really hope he writes this up. This is quite interesting. Uh, these are Malabar gliding frogs, um, also mating. It seemed that seems that love was in the air that evening because everybody was. Um, what's happening here is really cool. Uh, the females deposit the eggs while the male uh, drops sperm to fertilize them, and they form this bubble nest. Uh, these are the eggs here, but I got a video of this. Not responding. So what's really interesting as well was this was on the ground and these guys always build their nests on trees. It seemed that in the monsoon they just defy what they're supposed to do and they are just in a breeding frenzy. So there were these nests on the ground, on the side of posts uh, and on trees where they're supposed to be. So that's how they formed that bubble nest. Walking sticks were in the mood. So, so uh, this is that uh, Trevon Cobble snake that I, I showed at the start, but these guys are so pretty. Uh, I really like completely, uh, I really like black snakes. I think they're really interesting. Uh, another phase of the Malabar pit viper. This is a bicolored frog. Okay. So yeah, uh, I left Agumbe and uh, headed back to Pune, where I spent the last few days before uh, I flew back to Singapore. Uh, while we were there, we basically called up every snake rescuer in the vicinity saying, uh, if you guys get a call, call us, so that we could go out with them. Uh, we went out with one, one such call and found this uh, Indian sand boa. Um, these guys are uh, uh, snakes that live under the sand as well. They've got very interesting uh, scalation on the head. And um, the same genus is that uh, Whitaker's sand boa I showed you guys at the start. So this is one snake we got to rescue. Uh, this was another one. Uh, the, the banded racer, although this one lacked any bands. And then uh, this is by far the most interesting one. Uh, we got called to a confectionery. It was basically a muffin factory. So they uh, bake muffins, and um, I don't know whatever was in there should be quite terrifying. And look, look at this guy, <laughs> nice. But they had these long sticks and torches and were prodding in the back of this huge oven. 
So we figured, yeah, the oven was used the day before, it started to cool down, it was nice and warm. Over the night, some snake probably went and cozied up next to the oven. Uh, this guy is the local snake rescuer. Uh, they refuse to wear shoes as much as I tell them, but so uh, they, they, work, they work with venomous snakes still with uh, sandals, but at least he had some sort of uh, professional equipment instead of snake phones, but just a uh, cell phone uh, flashlight. Okay, in there was this. Yeah, so this is the Russell Viper, the second of the uh, big four in India. Um, there's a long video of how this snake comes out. I did not put it in. It's really long, but um, it's quite comical to see how they uh, were uh, trying to coax the snake out and then uh, guys would scream and run as soon as they thought the snake was going to come out. This happened again and again and again. <laughs> so they finally got the snake out and then he put it in this sort of a cookie jar thing. And the way that he put that on the ground and moved this Russell Viper in and pushed the whole body and tightened it up and had this snake like that. Now, I would not do that. With <laughs> I know what this guy can do to you. <laughs> so uh, this is that snake. Uh, later we found another one in the wild. Um, Russell's vipers are very, very pretty snakes. There are not many snakes that come with large polka dots like this. But yeah, also a snake with um, a really nasty venom that contributes to one of the 50,000 fatalities that happens every year in India. But I say it's of no fault of the snake. It's really about awareness and people. And um, the biggest, biggest thing that they can do is uh, put on some shoes and basically look at where they're walking. Mm -hmm. They walk in the dark. That's, I mean, that's not very smart. Yeah. Uh, this is a different Russell Piper that uh, we found. Okay, so these are some of my friends over there. This guy was the uh, local snake rescuer. Uh, this is my friend Dan. I'm not sure who these guys are, but um, I, I think maybe they worked with, uh, worked in this store there and they took the picture around the store, so they kind of joined us in the photo. But as you can see, we're all looking at one camera and some other person took the photo. So, yeah. uh, this was back in uh, Hamboli uh, with um, some of the... This guy works on dragons and damselflies. This guy actually collaborates with David Bigfoot here in Singapore working on frogs in the Western Guards. Uh, I'm not sure what he works on. <laughs> uh, this was in 2013 with that uh, local snake rescuer in Goa. And um, you can't really see his face. This is my friend Chaitanya. He's really shy. But all my trips to India and the places that I've been and the things that I've seen is thanks to this guy. Because um, he, he invites me over. He, uh, I, I stay with him when I'm in Pune. He settles all the logistics for me. And he just loves to, to help and go look for stuff and photograph stuff. So uh, we go out on our trips thanks to this guy. But, uh, I asked him, for, I mean, I have photos of his face, but he said, use this one. So I'm like, okay. okay. And lastly, the leeches. <laughs> okay. So this looks like a murder scene. This was at the floor of a restaurant we had lunch at. Uh, as wet, wet as it was, yeah, you could not escape these guys. And to the point that you don't care anymore. Uh, leak socks did not work. Okay, so... The guys over there would just wear sandals and just get bit and bleed out. <laughs> it seemed to work. We still wore shoes, but yeah. Uh, I have this. Uh, in Agumbe, that one time I went out in the afternoon, it was so wet and walking down the trail, you could see them <laughs> just crossing the trail. <laughs> so they said, come on, wear, wear leech socks. Are you going to get like a hundred leech bites? I don't believe them that you're going to get a hundred leech bites. But I wore leech socks, I came back and I took off my leech socks and <laughs> yeah. uh, that is it.